Hello, I'm Dr. Lorenzato, and I hope to see you in a few minutes. You're here today because you have elevated triglyceride levels, elevated hemoglobin A1C, and a depressed high-density lipoprotein level. You've uh, earned it by eating too much starch and sugar in your diet, most likely. We'll go into the details of that. And it's remedied um, e easily as well as I've just said by decreasing the starch and sugar in your diet. Hemoglobin A1c is a molecule, it is the percentage of hemoglobin, the oxygen carrying, carrying molecule in your red blood cells that is bound to sugar molecules. When your sugar level stays elevated, there is more hemoglobin A1c that becomes bound to sugar molecules. The lifetime of hemoglobin is 120 days, the lifetime of red blood cells. So if you were to start eating totally correct tomorrow, without causing your blood sugar to become elevated, you would have a different hemoglobin A1c in 120 days that probably wouldn't get any better. Hemoglobin A1c is frequently elevated in diabetics. Other things that can cause it to be elevated include having all your calories in one meal. So if a person fasts all day long, has one meal of say 2400 or 3000 calories with a substantial, a substantial amount of carbohydrates in that, their blood sugar level is going to go up. At first, the sugar will saturate their glycogen stores in their liver and their muscles. Beyond that, the sugar continues to go up. When it does, very high blood sugar levels that last for a while. It'll take the liver a while to convert that excess sugar into two carbon fragments and then into fatty acids. So the net result will be an elevated hemoglobin A1c if that's your pattern of eating. Question, does that do you any harm? The answer is probably. Glycolated hemoglobin, or glucose bound to hemoglobin, is just a measure of glycation in you. In other words, if you're glycating hemoglobin, you're probably glycating other critical proteins. All those proteins exist for a short period of time, of course, so when you stop doing that, you'll stop this damaging process. So I recommend anybody with an elevated hemoglobin A1c that has gotten there by eating too much rice, corn, flour, therefore pasta, pizza, cereals, to rethink their eating pattern and change. Triglycerides. There are two forms, or there are two uh, etiologies of elevated triglycerides. One is from too much rice, corn, and flour. As I mentioned, when you eat excessive amount of sugar or starch, a good portion of it will be converted into fats. Triglycerides are fat in your bloodstream. The other source of triglycerides are fats that you get from ingestion. After you eat a fatty meal, the fat is mobilized in your small intestine and absorbed in the enterocytes, the, the cells lining your small intestine. And eventually they make, they make it into your blood after going through the lymphatics. And eventually they'll be restructured in the lipoprotein form to various other lipoprotein forms. People that have high triglyceride levels have high fat levels in their bloodstream. This is a risk factor for heart disease. So high hemoglobin A1c, a risk for diabetes and heart disease. High triglycerides, a risk for heart disease. Two good reasons to change how you eat. HDL is high density lipoprotein. It's considered the good lipoprotein. Again, fats cannot travel in the bloodstream by themselves. Oils and water doesn't work. So nature provides a case of protein around these fat molecules to transport them. HDL helps transport lipids, including cholesterol, from the cell linings of blood vessels back to the liver. So if you have high cholesterol levels developing plaque in, in uh, your vasculature, and you have high HDL levels, the HDL will shunt the cholesterol back to the liver and undo that plaque. It will help remedy this disease process. When you have low HDL levels, you're denied that opportunity and you have accelerated problems of building more plaque or developing heart disease. Low HDL levels correlate with higher risks of heart disease. So I've tried to make the point, these are dietarily induced. There are other factors besides high uh, starch and sugar intake that can cause them. Primarily, if you have any partially hydrogenated oils in your diet, that could be a problem. Um, as well as this, by the types of oils you put in your diet, you can increase antioxidants 
if you get your oils from nuts and seeds and from natural products as opposed to from frying things, um, you will benefit from higher antioxidants in those lipoproteins. With high antioxidants in the lipoproteins, you'll may make less, less plaque, less heart disease. So, I hope you now have a better understanding of elevated triglyceride, elevated hemoglobin A1c, and depressed uh, high-density lipoprotein, or HDL, and how it correlates with a cultural pattern of eating. You have the potential to remedy this for yourself and your family members and the culture at large. Thank you. See you shortly.